I recently realized that we haven't really been putting our five minute sonar videos on our YouTube page. My bad. We're going to start putting them on there about every week just to start building that library up, that section of our YouTube channel at Core Ultrasound. Now, some of these videos are going to be a little bit on the old side, but if they haven't been updated, it either means that number one, the data is still good in them, or number two, I just haven't had time to get around to it. So we're slowly going through these and we're updating these, but we really want to share with you all, all those five minute Sona videos that we have. Now, briefly, if you don't know what they are, what our five minute Sona videos are, are really quick, just short lectures around five minutes, most of them are five minutes or less, where we kind of just show you the basics of how to do a specific examination. We're not going to talk about every scenario. We're not going to talk about all of the evidence, when to use it. We're going to assume that you already want to use this and you just want a refresher or a quick primer on specifically how to do that examination. So check out the video and let me know what you think. Hello, this is Jacob Avila of Core Ultrasound, and in this five minute sono, I'm gonna walk you through how to assess basic cardiac function. The probe of choice for this exam is going to be your phased array transducer, although in a pinch, the curvilinear transducer will work just as well. Now, there are a lot of different views that you can use, but for the most part, the best view to start out with is the parasternal long axis view. If you have your machine in the cardiology setting, which means the probe marker is gonna go on this, on the right side of that wedge, the probe marker is gonna to go towards the right shoulder, and you wanna get your best parasternal long axis view. Let's walk through a little bit of anatomy just to orient you. This right here is the parasternal long axis view. We have the left atrium, the mitral valve, the left ventricle, the aorta, and then up top here, we have the right ventricular outflow tract. For assessing the ejection fraction, there's a lot of different methods you can use. You can use fractional shortening, you can use the Simpsons method of discs, you can use the eyeball method, and you can use the EPSS. What I usually do is I start off with the eyeball method, meaning I just look at this chamber right here and try and figure out if I think that the chamber size is changing about 50%. Using the eyeball method, we can see that over here, we have a good ejection fraction, about 50% chamber size difference. And then over here, we're seeing definitely not that, a significantly reduced amount of chamber volume change with every cardiac cycle. If you're just starting out, using the eyeball method might be a little bit tricky. Fortunately, there is a more quantitative measure you can use. You can do something called the EPSS, or the E-point septal separation. I don't know if you know this, but the mitral valve right here actually opens twice in the cardiac cycle. The E deflection of the mitral valve is when you have that pressure difference between the atrium and the ventricle. And then the A deflection is when you have the atrial kick. So it actually kind of opens or moves twice in that cardiac cycle. And you can actually measure how close the mitral valve gets to the septum to create a kind of surrogate marker of that ejection fraction. I'm gonna take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. So what you do here is you use your M mode cursor and you place it just on the distal tips of that mitral valve, hit the M mode button again, and then you're gonna get a waveform that looks like this. When doing M mode, what you're doing is you're actually seeing the change in distance from the probe along a line over time. So right here we had the bar, the M mode bar, just over the tips of the mitral valve leaflet. And we can see here, how this mitral valve is moving relative to the septum. And once we get this measurement, what we can do is we can actually measure that distance between the septum and the E point right here. Now, if this distance is very small, meaning the mitral valve opens up a bunch, you have a great ejection fraction. And if this E point septal separation is big, it means the mitral valve isn't opening all that much, meaning a low ejection fraction. These are the numbers that are often quoted. You have an EPSS greater than 10 millimeters, it is likely to be heart failure. And then if you have an EPSS less than seven millimeters, unlikely to be heart failure. In this clip, we see a very high EPSS. The distance between the septum and the maximal excursion of that mitral valve is 1.67 centimeters, way above our one centimeter cutoff for ruling in CHF. 
there's a gray area in between those two numbers. And what I do is, if I'm not sure, I add on my lung examination to look for uh, sonographic B lines. I'll add my IVC examination to evaluate the CVP. If my patient has a bunch of B lines and a high CVP, much more likely to be heart failure if they have uh, no B lines and a low CVP, much less likely to be heart failure. There's a few caveats for the EPSS, and those are things that artificially will keep the mitral valve leaflet like down, irrespective of the ejection fraction. The first one is this, this is some mitral stenosis, which is tethering the ends of the mitral valve leaflet, so we won't get a accurate EPSS reading there. And the other thing is aortic regurg, that's that blue flame right there, artificially pushing down that mitral valve, which is irrespective of that ejection fraction. While the perishable long axis view is probably the best view to use, you can also use any view to look at it. This is a, a apical four chamber view, good ejection fraction, and over here we have a low ejection fraction. This is a perishable short axis view right here is the left ventricle, here is the left ventricle, this is a good ejection fraction, and this right here is a very low ejection fraction. And then you can also use a sub xiphoid view, left side of the heart over here, right side of the heart over here. This left heart is very diminished, the heart itself is a bit tachycardic, but the chamber size really isn't changing all that much compared to what's going on on this side over here. To summarize, you are looking for an estimate of that global function. Your perishable long axis view is probably the best one, although any view will work. And your EPSS less than seven millimeters does a good job at ruling out heart failure and an EPSS greater than 10 millimeters does great at ruling it in. Hopefully that was helpful for you all. I can't wait to hear from you soon and happy scanning.